Hello everyone. Today we will learn another spectacular discovery in modern physics with the help of Stern Geller experiment. In my talk, I will be touching upon angular momentum, inhomogeneous magnetic field, quantization of spin, and finally, we will derive an expression for space quantization. All of us know that all rotating bodies will have angular momentum. An electron has only two possible values of spins, either clockwise or anticlockwise. So, angular momentum of an electron is quantized. As stern gelac experiment involves magnetic fields, let us see basic properties of magnets. We know opposite poles of magnets will attract each other and similar poles will repel each other. Now, the unpaired electron will have spin and hence angular momentum. This will lead to magnetic moment for the electron. So, an electron or spinning electron begins to behave like a tiny magnet. In this picture, let us imagine that electron is represented with the help of the small tiny magnet and it is passing through this magnetic field between the poles of this another big magnet. In the first picture, the electron, while behaving like a magnet, its poles are at equal distance from north and south pole of the big magnet and hence it doesn't experience any force. In the second picture, the magnet is designed in such a way that the north pole is stronger than the south pole. As a result, when the electron moves between the pole pieces of the magnet, it experiences a force. So the poles having unequal strength, we say it is inhomogeneous magnetic field. So in the inhomogeneous magnetic field, in the first picture you can see it is homogeneous magnetic field. Both poles are having equal strength. So the tiny magnet never experiences any force. Whereas in the second picture, the designing is such that the north pole is stronger. So, the magnet experiences a force. The third picture just tells that the basic understanding of magnets and the lines of force will be originating from north pole to south pole. The north magnet, north pole is stronger. So, it is just picturized as bigger in size and the south pole is little bit weaker. If the electron behaving like a magnet comes like this, if the south pole is near to the north pole, it gets attracted. If the north pole is facing this north pole of the big magnet, then it will be repelled downwards. If the atom prefers to move this way, it doesn't experience any force at all. Let us now get into the experiment. So here another picturization. Electron as a beam when it is passing through the magnetic field depending upon its orientation those electrons will be deflected in the inhomogeneous magnetic field so scientists believed that the electrons will be deflected in all directions like this but when the experiment was carried out by stern and jellac when electron beam passed through this inhomogeneous magnetic field they could find only two traces which was very surprising discovery the classically we felt that in all directions the deflection could take place but the experimental results revealed that only two alignment only two orientations are possible this was a stunning discovery so now let us get into the experiment this is the experimental setup that both scientists used this is the oven in which silver is heated. So from the oven through the slits, a thin beam of uh, silver atoms will be coming out. Silver, the electronic configuration is given like this. It has 47 electrons. 
out of 47 electrons, 46 are paired and the 5s1 electron alone is unpaired. So the entire properties of silver is due to this unpaired electron in the 5s1 shell. Now, from the oven, a thin beam of silver atom is coming out and it is directed between the poles of the magnet. The magnets are designed in such a way that north pole is very stronger and the south pole is weaker. Now, when the silver atoms pass through the magnetic field, the inhomogeneous magnetic field, you can see the five is the electrons of atoms, those had clockwise spins. They were all deflected in the upward direction. And those electrons which had anticlockwise spins will be deflected in the downward direction. There is a photographic plate which records the tracing of these atoms on this photographic film. So the film shows that there is only two alignment. The upper trace is due to electrons having clockwise spins and the lower trace is due to electrons having anticlockwise spins. So initially if there is no magnetic field the photographic film will just trace a single thin line like this. In the presence of the magnetic field we have a curve like this upper curve and lower curve and Classically, scientists believe that if electron orients in all directions, the photographic film will be having traces like this, depicting that they are all deflected in various directions like this. But the previous slide showed the trace is only two curves. Now, let us derive an expression for the separation between the two curves on the photographic film. Now, this diagram will help us to understand. Let us apply an inhomogeneous magnetic field along the y direction. The magnetic strength, this magnetic field strength is increasing along y direction. And let us just consider one electron which behaves like a magnet having north pole and south pole. It is just an imagination. A tiny electron we cannot see, but we just, for convenience sake, we just assume that it's a thin line and inclined with the applied magnetic field like this. Now the poles, north pole, south pole, and P is the pole strength, and the distance between the poles is L. Now, when the magnetic field is applied, this electron as a tiny magnet will experience a force vertically and try to align in the direction of the external applied magnetic field. The force at, at this pole is Pb, pole strength in magnetic field into magnetic field strength. And the force experienced by this pole will be P into B plus dB by dy into L cos theta. Why this expression is different? This is due to the increasing direction of the magnetic field. As we go up, the strength of the magnetic field is increasing. There is a gradient of increase in magnetic field along the y direction. So, one pole is experiencing a force Pb and the other pole is experiencing a force P into B plus dB by dy into L cos theta. So, the difference in force uh, if you find out, you will find that the electron as a magnet will experience a force given by PL cos theta dB by dy. We know pole strength into length of length between the poles gives magnetic moment M cos theta into dB by dy. Now, according to kinematic relations, the spacing between the two curves on the photographic film can be taken as D in the Y direction. Kinematic relation. Yes, we, we remember the expression S equal to UT plus half AT square. If initial velocity is zero, then this, the distance moved S equal to half AT square. That relation only we have used here. 
So the distance between the two curves is half ay t squared, where t is the time taken by the atoms to travel the magnetic field distance. And ay is the acceleration imparted on the atoms along the y direction. Now acceleration we know from Newton's law, force equal to mass into acceleration. So acceleration along y direction equal to fy by m. We know the expression from the previous slide. What was the expression we know? That one if you substitute. And we know distance equal to velocity equal to distance by time. From that time equal to distance by velocity. V is the velocity of the silver atoms in the magnetic field. So if we substitute all the, that, all the data, we get the separation becomes equal to half into m cos theta by small m dv by dy into l by v whole squared. So this expression gives the magnitude, the, the space between the two lines, the two curves on the photographic film. So if we go back and see, yeah, with the help of a scale, if we measure the distance between the two curves and if we calculate with the help of this formula, the, the, the value we get just agrees very well with each other. So this experiment comes out with a beautiful finding that first of all, electron has a spin and then the space between the two curves is quantized, which is the result of vector atom model. Thus, stern gerlach experiment is an eye-opening experiment and with the help of this, there was a lot of development in modern physics. Thank you. Hope you have enjoyed this experiment and the findings. Thank you.